Jesus Christ, I need an air conditioner in here. Uh, hi, welcome to another video on, on the on the channel th that of, of whatever we're doing today. I promise that randomizer sequel is coming soon, as soon as I can get off my ass and actually record it. I haven't done a weapons ranking video in four whole months, and that means this video took four whole months to make, so you're welcome. Today I'm going after the underrated weapons, the cool swords and hammers and kill you sticks that you've probably looked at in a playthrough and thought, wow, that, <laughs> that thing looks awful. Like seriously, that thing looks like an over cooked fish that someone just left in a pan for two weeks. Like, is this a sword? Or what, what the hell am I supposed to? I'm never going to use this in my life. And then you just keep using your magic uchi katana and forget you ever picked it up. Well, uh, that's what this video is about. So, uh, Oh, and I guess I should have opened with this earlier, but I forgot, but I remembered again, so I'm doing it now. I don't give an eighth of a damn and or F word about what's meta in PvP and what isn't. I'm only considering what weapons gave me a fun enough single player experience because that's just my bread and butter. The Glenstone Dart unique skill is the only redeeming factor because the weapon itself does less critical damage than most daggers you can choose from, and it also doesn't boost Glintstone sorceries, like the Chinquidia can boost bestial incantations, but I mean, if we're being honest, those fuckers aren't exactly in need of help anyway, so just wear the talisman, who cares. It may not do as much damage, but this dagger's follow-up stab is a straight-up knockout punch to anyone who dares approach you with low poise. It's got a pretty cool magic bullet as the initial poke, and you can charge it if you have enough time to do so. If you want to be especially nasty, you can have another weapon on you with a glint blade phalanx ash, pop that off, and the stun you get from the phalanx ash will always leave you with enough time to charge it up fully. And you can close distance with the follow-up stab, which is always good for mage builds that want to close in. Speaking of daggers, a weapon absolutely no one uses is the Chinquidia. Nope, I, I f fuck you, that's how it's pronounced. I actually looked it up this time. And it's probably because it looks like a giant ugly fingernail, and most people I'd be willing to guess are just too lazy to actually go down to the Bestial Sanctum and grab it. In Northern Italy, it's a short sword, but here in Elden Ring, it's a dagger that scales off strength, which is already peculiar enough, but it also gives Bestial Incantations a nice little boost of 10%, and it combos amazingly with Bestial Sling. Like, seriously, an R1 goes out so quickly after the sling, it's it's honestly kind of stupid. I'm surprised it hasn't gotten past. <laughs> I mean, uh, oh man, this thing certainly is bad. Nope, nope, no need to no need to balance anything here. From soft, just move along. I really like using this thing just because there's so much shit you can stack with it. It stacks pretty comfortably with the claw mark seal, and you can even throw in the Radagon icon and maybe a canvas talisman. I kind of wish it had more flexibility with Ashes of War, as having a simple quick step on such a unique looking weapon doesn't really seem that fit. But the bestial boost is a pretty nice selling point, especially when the sling is already bull perfectly fine and balanced. The Nox Sword, I think, has very strong early game potential, so going after it and collecting it early seems counterproductive since it's hidden away in Kaled, but the Nox boss fight isn't actually that overwhelming, as long as you have a summon with you, and also firing any sort of projectile like a glintstone sorcery or something allows you to control exactly when they dodge. Turns out you can read the fight a lot better when both the bosses are breaking out into a synchronized dance party. It has extremely high base damage in addition to some very useful ignoring of damage negation when an enemy is shielding or blocking in some way. The hammer isn't found until the city of Noxtella, putting it a little further out of reach, and it looks like a giant nutsack, but both unique skills involve the weapon sweeping in these wide arcs that are really great for clearing out groups of small enemies, catching shit through walls, which you know I'm always a huge fan of, and it can sometimes catch other agile enemies in the middle of dodges and rolls and whatnot. I sometimes feel like this game really slept on pure dex and strength builds, but then I'm reminded you can get weapons like these, which are two of the funnest weapons you can pick up in my opinion. Number 7, the Sword of Milos. <laughs> Holy shit, it hurts me that people don't use this as often as it deserves. The sword is literally just a sharpened giant spine. Like, it even says so in the description, like that's not something I just pulled out of my ass or something. It's got a passive FP regeneration that stacks with the Ancestral Horn Talisman, giving a grand total of 8 FP regenerated per enemy killed. The unique skill drops enemy defense by 15%, which is a bit of a drawback considering you'll get a little more mileage out of something like Grail's Roar but it does have a unique heavy attack you can only see on this weapon and on Death's Poker, which is this really cool upwards diagonal slash, and charging it allows you to run towards your target and cover some distance in addition to the already massive damage it'll hit for. Also, using the unique skill reveals hidden enemies because you can see the debuff being applied, making it great for exploring caves and dungeons and other tightly packed areas where enemies are more likely to be tucked away in dark corners of the map, waiting to gouge your eyes out with some sharp rock they picked up or something. That doesn't 
set it apart from other debuffs like Grails War or anything because you can still see the debuff status being applied to them if they're invisible. But it does have bleed build up too, so even Lord of Blood Talisman users can find something they can coom over. Number 6, Scepter of the All-Knowing. You can get this hammer from the game's very own Gideon Offnir after figuring out which weapon you'd like to one-hit bonk him with while he's monologuing Syndrome style during his fight. Its unique skill is a debuff that lowers magic and holy resistance for everyone in the vicinity, including you, which is absolutely amazing against anything that doesn't have magic or holy aligned attacks, so it is a little niche, but against the enemies it works with, it does work with very well. All the extra help is wonderful against magma worms and ancient dragon boss because they're usually already weak to those elements, and it helps out against pretty much every dungeon boss you can find. The hammer also has a slightly longer length than other normal hammers you can find, which does feel really comfortable when you're in a melee battle, and it's the only hammer in the game that has dex int scaling, so you can finally stop using anime swords and try out something different for once in your life. It's still a lackluster choice as far as weapons in general, but its unique skill still makes the hammer very effective as a sidearm paired with magic, cold, and sacred affinity weapons, or if you're just a pure caster that likes to throw magic at everything and call it a day. It works for you too. The Dragon Halberd has a trick hidden up its sleeve. If you were turned off by the weapon mainly being a thrusting weapon, then you weren't the only one because I almost immediately dismissed it on a first playthrough as soon as I didn't see the standard Halberd moveset and the boring spitting slash. Turns out that spinning slash is exactly the hidden trick I'm talking about. See, if you read the word spinning slash and thought, oh, well, this weapon can eat my nuts, I'm gonna do something else, then I'd recommend you to go back and try it out for yourself because this isn't just any spinning slash, it's a lightning-infused slash that buffs the Halberd bird with lightning and frostbite damage, and it's actually animated slightly faster than the normal spinning slash found on other halberds. It basically gets the dragon scale blade treatment where the unique skill is basically another ash of war, but like, you know, better because it's blue. I'm not crazy about poking stick simulators. I personally tend to think the movesets on other halberd-esque weapons like the Guardian Sword Spear and the War Sickle are a bit more dynamic and enjoyable, but it was hard for me to ignore the Dragon Halberd due to its unique design and high physical scaling. Additionally, unlike the Dragon Scale Blade, which is a weapon that's only good looking, it has a damage bonus against dragons that actually feels useful because dragons have a naturally high resistance against slash type attacks and not so much against thrusting attacks. Number 4, the Giant's Red Braid. Getting this weapon is worth it just for the unique skill alone. I talked about how it was practically an insult to this weapon that I didn't see anyone using it or making a big deal out of it back in the unique skill tips video, and I'm doing it now too because apparently shit didn't change. The Flame Dance is obviously the showstopper here as there's really nothing else that this weapon excels in that can provide a potential selling point, and that's because it's a whip, and whips suck duck nuts, except for the fact that they can't be parried. And if that's the only reason you use whips, then fuck man, just use a flail. Not only does this unique skill slap harder than your stepdad, but it also has amazing range, scales greatly with strength and faith, and I've noticed the unique skill can stunlock weaker enemies pretty consistently. Grab a cold affinity whip and power stance these bitches for extra supreme damage. As far as whips go, it's really hard to actually stand out or do anything special just because it, it's a whip. It's not really that efficient of a weapon, but I think this one definitely does that. You kill a Falling Star Beast in Mount Gelmir and literally rip off its mandible and start using it as a weapon. <laughs> What the fuck, man? Okay, so yeah, number three, Falling Star Beast Jaw. I don't think it's a coincidence that a lot of the most overlooked weapons tend to not look like weapons at all, but instead the various ripped off body parts of these giant creatures you're killing. I don't know, maybe we need to broaden up our taste a bit. Decent scaling for both strength and dex right out of the gate, in addition to being far and away the longest range colossal weapon you can find. Like, seriously, there's no competition. The Gravity Bolt skill can reach enemies from insanely long range, and it only takes around three to four uses for even large enemies like the omens to get poise broken by it. I personally never found the appeal of it outside of its unique skill because it's just so hard to ignore the poise break potential on it. I mean you can call me a deck simp as much as you like, but weapons like this were always just too slow for my playstyle I guess. The 20% damage boost against gravity aligned enemies also isn't a huge deal since half the gravity based enemies you'll be chopping down will be falling star beasts anyways. And if you've killed this thing then chances are you've already killed the other two, but this damage boost does apply against both Astell fights, so I guess it does balance out. 
Number two is the Zamor Curved Sword. I am so sorry I ever dismissed you just because you looked like a fossilized can opener. Like with many other instances, my eyes saw something I already had and instantly threw this sword away like a weak old fast food bag. Turns out the Zamor Ice Storm unique skill is actually very different from the original spell, as in it's, it's fucking better. It's just better. It has a closer range, sure, but it has a more immediate casting time, does more damage, more frostbite buildup, and it has better hyper armor than the spell variant could wish it had. It does have a a small drawback in that it's the shortest ranged curved sword of them all, but it also has an alternate moveset that's much more graceful than the standard CGS moveset, even if it does take slightly longer than the final attack in the combo to actually hit, but I mean that's just nitpicking at this point. Number one is the Magma Worm's Scale Sword. Fittingly, this thing looks ugly as shit, and if you share that opinion, then I don't think there's anything I can say that'll convince you to use this sword. It's it's modeled after a whole ass worm scale, like it's supposed to be all funky looking. I tend to go for the more traditional and standard poking sticks the game gives you, but the Scale Sword has honestly been a weapon that I just can't ignore how badass it is. For starters, the Magma Guillotine moves your hitbox around so damn much that it's almost impossible to even get hit during it, let alone actually be staggered out of it, unless you're brain dead enough to just launch yourself into a giant AoE. Despite being a curved greatsword, this weapon has plenty of faster attack options you normally wouldn't expect from such a large weapon, such as the two-handed heavy attack and the crouching light attack. When fully upgraded, it has unexpectedly great scaling on both strength and faith, although the physical damage output is something you'll see much more often, so it's definitely best to invest into strength first all the way to the desired 60 before putting any large investments into faith. The Magma Guillotine is best used on large large slow enemies where you're absolutely sure you're getting the full damage, but even on smaller enemies, the magma pools can sometimes stun them in place, so even though you won't always get the highest damage possible every single time, it's still damage that's gonna be very consistent. Oh, and if you saw my unique skill tips video, you'll also know this thing has the turning radius of a goddamn Mazda MX-5. It's probably, in my opinion, one of the greatest strength faith weapons you can find in the whole game, and only at the expense of looking like a rotten, overcooked penguin. You guys want an outro so bad? Fine, write one for me in the comments. Bye.